So this morning, I was casually browsing a Flutter documentation while eating breakfast, because who doesn't do that, right? And I noticed something. The raise button widget is not deprecated. After a bit of digging around on the internet, I found out they actually released three new widgets together. So the old flat button is now replaced with a new text button, and raised button got replaced with contained button, and then in just 24 hours, got renamed to elevated button, which I agree is a better name. Also, online button got replaced with online da button. I'm sure that's easy to remember. Anyway, so I upgraded my Flutter to the latest beta version and played around with the new buttons. They're pretty good, and here's what you need to know. First of all, these buttons reflect new changes in material design guidelines. So in a way, they all look more material already. This is how they look by default compared to their old counterparts. The most basic usage hasn't changed. Assuming you don't mind a tiny bit of difference in size or shape and, you know, the color, you'll still basically passing a child and a callback to do your stuff when it's pressed. Or if you want to, you can use unlong press to do some other stuff when the user, well, long presses your button. But that's where the similarities end. Now, if you look at all the properties of the old race button, we see a bunch of stuff, mostly related to styling, like settings color, or text color, or disable color, or disable text color, well, really? Or focus color, or hover color, or highlight color, or splash color. But if you look at the shiny new elevated button, you will gladly see a lot less properties. That's because they grouped everything related to styling into a new property, unsurprisingly named style. According to their docs, this should make simple styling tasks even simpler and make complex stylings possible. To change the style, we need to pass in a button style class. For example, to change the background to green, we can override the background color property inside button style. But it does not take in a color type as you would expect. Instead, it takes in a material state property, which supports a list of values based on the widget state. Like, is it being pressed? Is it being hovered? Or does it have focus? And so on. Here, if we want to change the color to green in all cases, we can use material state property dot all to do that. Or if we want to go extra fancy, we can use resolve with constructor to specify how we want to handle each case. For example, when the button is pressed, we'll set it to blue, and in all other cases, we'll simply return red. But that is a lot of code. Fortunately though, you probably don't need to write these all that often. Remember they also said they want to make simple styling tasks even simpler? Well, they got a convenience method, style from, to do all the heavy lifting for you. For example, to use the button's default style as a starting point, you can start with elevated button dot style from and pass in any value you would like to override. So say you want to change the shadow color, simply write shadow color, colors dot red. No material state property involved. Sweet. Oh, and don't forget, they also have a named constructor dot icon, which lets you um, easily add an icon to a button. Cause you know, inserting a row widget as a child to a button isn't the only way to get an icon in there. So there you have it, a short video describing great new changes to material buttons in Flutter. They've done a really excellent job this time. Grouping styling properties together will make them more streamlined. And hopefully anyone new to Flutter won't be overwhelmed with a massive list of properties. I'm looking at you, text field. <laughs>